Hey, happy Friday. What are we talking about today? Social media reach and engagement continues on a downward spiral. And it's so important that nonprofits don't rely on social media to reach their audience. Bring on the email newsletter. Email's not dead and it's not going anywhere. But in order to reap the benefits of email for your nonprofit, you need a strategic plan to do it right. I'm your host, Julia Campbell, and today I will be giving you five quick tips to improve your nonprofit email newsletter and do it without a lot of fancy tech or a big team. So hi, everyone. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm going to see who is here and who is watching live. So give a shout out in the comments. Let me know that you're here. Let me know what you're doing this lovely Friday. Also, as usual, if you want to get notified every time I go live, just make sure you follow the page and share this with other people that you think could benefit, that maybe their email newsletter needs a glow up, right? So let's see. I also want to, um, well, first of all, talk about my week just for one quick second. Bear with me. My children, who are 11 and 6, I keep saying 5, but yes, he is 6, were back in school for five entire days in a row. I mean, it's a luxury that I didn't know existed. And my husband, who I adore, is renting an office in a WeWork thing, I don't actually know what it's called, in a neighboring town. The house has been quiet. I have been more productive than I ever thought possible. But I don't want to worship at the altar of productivity. I've also been taking walks. I've been doing virtual spin classes. I have been reading, I have been really living my best life, and my kids are so, so happy. So I've been having a fantastic week. How have all of you been? I see Michelle from Maine. Hi, Jim. Sunny South Florida. It's actually sunny here today as well. Um, Wisconsin, I see. Oh, congratulations, kids going back to school. Like I said, I feel decadent talking about it. I feel like it's a luxury. And you know, the rug can be pulled out from under us at any moment. Anything can happen. We're taking everything one day at a time, right? We are, we're counting our, our blessings. So I'm super excited to be here today. Also, if you are not on my email list, you might not know my newest live training for nonprofits is going to be next week. It's going to be on April 14th. I'm going to put it in the comments. And as per all of my live trainings that I do, I offer it at $47, which is kind of a steal because I'm going to teach you literally every single trick I know about email marketing. And then I up the price when I sell the recording. So if you want to save $100, sign up now. You'll get the recording, the slides. You can join me live on April 14th, however you want to do it. What we're going to talk about in that training, so today is going to be a little bit of a teaser, but in the full hour and a half live training that I'm giving next week, we're going to learn specific ways to make your nonprofit uh, website an email capturing machine, how to get people from social media onto your email list, probably one of my number one questions that I get, how much email to send and what to write, and some tips on increasing deliverability and click-through rates so you can make an even bigger impact. Okay. So let's see. Um, all right. Yeah. Marty need to talk the boss into it. Yeah. I mean, you got it. You do. I, that's the, I know how it goes with nonprofits. Um, you have to talk the boss into it and, you know, convince them that spending this money will help them increase their email revenue. I mean, I think so. Kristen, I know so actually. Jennifer, hi Jennifer, nice to see you. So once again, Facebook is not showing me all the comments, um, but we'll we'll do our best. We'll we'll manage. <laughs> we will manage. Thank you for sharing. Um, if you've been sharing, so let's just dive into it because it's a gorgeous day. I am north of Boston. If you are not familiar with me, and um, it's a beautiful day here, so let's just get into it and. If you have any questions at all, put them in the comments. I can see um, questions. Sarah says, I paid for it myself, sadly, but excitedly. So actually, I want to just do a little tangent, Sarah. Um, 
I am addicted to online courses and I, the courses that I've been taking are a pretty significant in investment, but honestly, when you invest that money, and this is not to say investing with me, this is investing with anybody else. And the $47, I don't think I would consider that an investment for some people it is, but it makes you just feel so good because you know, on the calendar, I'm going to spend this dedicated time on this task that I need to do, that I know I need to improve in this area. And that's why I actually really enjoy the tr the trainings that I pay for, because I know, I mean, I've got so many free webinars like stacked up um, in my inbox and collecting digital dust and all of these free resources. But for some reason, when I pay for it, I really show up and I've got my notebook and I'm excited and it's like my commitment to myself and my professional development. So. I'm a big fan. I do it myself when I can and when it can fit into my schedule um, and in my budget. All right. So I want to dive into today's topic and I want to give you some statistics around email versus social media. Now, a lot of you know me and have worked with me or maybe taken social media for Social Good Academy. Maybe you've taken some of my social media webinars. I wouldn't, I would not call myself a social media evangelist, but I would say I'm a, definitely a social media expert. I think that it has huge benefits, huge possibilities, huge potential for nonprofits to spread their mission far and wide, to reach new audiences, to grab attention, to pique curiosity, to cast that wide net, and then to bring people in along with your mission. But I don't think you should put all your eggs in the social media basket. I never think you should put all your eggs in anybody's basket. Um, you know, oh, hi, Casey. Oh, hi, Nancy. I love it. Thank you. Ooh, a DEI in the workplace certificate. Kristen, share that link. Um, that's something that I'm very interested in. Okay. Casey, thank you. Social Media for Social Good Academy was definitely worth the investment. Thank you. I appreciate that. Always happy to Always happy to see that. So some statistics. Um, Optin Monster uh, found that 58% of consumers open email up first thing in the morning, as opposed to 14% that check social media first thing. MailChimp found that the average open rate for nonprofit email marketing is 25.9%, while the average Facebook post gets 2 to 3% engagement. It's really getting ugly out there. It turns out that 60% of consumers subscribe to a brand's email list to receive promotional messages compared to 20% who follow brands on social media to get promotions and marketing messages. So I think, I mean, those statistics, I never share statistics just for like laughs. What that tells me is that people, I mean, e email is a very effective way to build relationships and get your message across. So I wanna give you the five ways to improve your email newsletter and thus improve the experience for your donors and subscribers. So what we need to do first, right? We need to entirely change our mindset around email, okay? Email is not a transactional tool. Email should be used to deepen existing relationships and welcome new people to the fold. So all of you should have a welcome email series, right? I hope you do. I see a nonprofit website, email list, and social media as all fitting together in sort of your, your digital ecosystem with separate but complementary purposes. So your website is your hub of information. That is where people are going to go when they meet you, they hear about you, they hear something in the news and they're very interested in a cause and they're searching and they want to know about you and they want more information. Your your website is your hub for marketing, for fundraising, for programs, for services. Your email is your relationship builder where you can get to know people a little bit better or they can get to know you a little bit better. It's like not necessarily an introduction because if I sign up for your email list, I'm probably invested in the cause. I'm probably interested in the problem you're solving and the solution that you're providing. So I wouldn't say it's like 
uh, I wouldn't say it was like a 100% brand new cold people on your email list. It's a relationship builder. It's a place to deepen trust and affinity and showcase all of the awesome stuff that you're doing, right? And social media is more top of funnel, which is sort of, you know, getting to know you, building um, affinity, building awareness, sharing stories. We have to, I, we have to simplify our social media. And that is another entire workshop that I'm preparing because we can repurpose what we are sharing on all of these channels, but we have to understand the level of audience awareness. If they're on our email list, that means they've given us their email, right? That is actually a really huge transaction and you should guard that with trust. I know that I guard my email list with trust. Trust and listen to me, I get offers all the time to sell to my email list, to promote things to my email list, to give up my email list. No, no, my email list is sacred and yours should be too because it's a more intimate relationship than it is social media because it's just it just is. And you know it as well if you're on social media and you sign up for emails. So when we're talking about changing our mindset, that's the first thing we have to do. Use your email marketing campaigns to tell stories, show your subscribers the impact of the work. Okay, number two tip. Make it personal. Make it from a person. Inject your personality. Give it some flavor. Have it be interesting. Actually, I'm working with a client now. I hope they don't mind if I call them out, but I think they're amazing. Biodiversity for a livable climate. Their emails are amazing. I really think so. So I'm doing their audit and assessment right now. I just sent it to them and their emails, they're written in this incredible way. It's just from a person. I feel like someone's speaking directly to me and you can tell a person wrote it. It wasn't by a marketing committee. It wasn't by a board. It wasn't by a bot. And it's not just about promotions. It's really about connecting the person at the other end of the email to what you're trying to say. It's focused on the why. It's focused on the problem that you're solving and some maybe specific ways that you, the email subscriber, the donor, the supporter can get involved and make a difference. So considering changing it up, make it be from somebody else in your organization. So another client, oops, another client I have, um, the Marfan Foundation, which is a, a rare disease, we crafted their membership appeal, their membership campaign to be from two different teenage girls that have a Marfan syndrome diagnosis and they ended up being best friends. They met at the conference. They have this whole fantastic story. They're like regular teenage girls, except they're dealing with this chronic condition. And the email was from them and it was in their words. I mean, I wrote, I was ghostwriter, right? But I interviewed them. We took photos with them. I mean, they are, first of all, absolutely phenomenal, incredible um, young women. But having it be from a person, it just makes so much of a difference. And another example I'll give you is another client, Fight Colorectal Cancer. We wrote a series of year-end appeal emails, every single one from a different ambassador, from a different advocate, from a different person that had suffered um, from colorectal cancer or a diagnosis and had been helped by the organization. So it doesn't always have to be from you. It doesn't always have to be from your executive director, but having it be from a person is um, phenomenal. Okay, number three, the number three tip. Make it clear, absurdly clear, and absurdly easy to take action. So include, okay, now I don't want you to have multiple calls to action. I don't want you to ask me to do 20 things in an email. This is not, you can maybe, maybe two, maybe three, I don't know. Certainly if it's like a news roundup or something like that and you have news roundup at the bottom and links to click or something like that, that is something that people love. People love news roundups. They love, they want you to be the go-to resource. They trust you to cultivate and curate great information. So I don't consider that a call to action. I consider that more like, here are some great resources for you at the bottom of the email or here are our upcoming events. 
<clears throat> but every email should have a call to action, whether it's donate, maybe it's watch our new video, maybe it's join our membership, maybe it is post on social media, whatever it might be. Include that call to action multiple times in the email. You might not have a call to action. Honestly, some of you might just be sending these fantastic emails just to build the relationships and share stories and things like that. I think that's fantastic. But if you do have a call to action, you wanna make sure that it is linked multiple times in the email and make it absurdly easy to do. Because we have to remember 56% of emails are opened on a phone. So it has to be able, it's an action that I have to be able to accomplish on a phone, right? So put it in the header, put it in the body of the email, put it in the footer, put it in the PS, um, put the call to action with a box or a circle around it um, with the words and a large clear font. Have it not be passive, you know, support our organization. I don't know what that means. Get involved. I don't know what that means. What about join the movement? Take action now and email your senator. You know, give now. Those kinds of action words. And I apologize, I have allergies. So I might be sniffling a lot right now. So pro tip, when you write this button, use the words I want to in your head, right? So imagine your subscriber is saying, wow, this is great. I want to, what's the next step? And then whatever that is, put that in your call to action. Okay, great. Thanks, Justin. Wow, this is really good stuff. Um, Becky says, what about a voice from an inanimate object? Which is very interesting to me because the client I just talked about, biodiversity for livable client, for liv livable climate, they had an email that was written from the perspective of a monarch butterfly, and it was really good. It was great. It just depends. Like it, it, you don't want it to sound like the onion. My all-time favorite onions, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna swear, so it's not safe for work. But my all-time favorite onion article, if you don't read the onion, read the onion. Was they do dual perspectives, and they did they do dual op eds, right? And they're all fake, and it's all you know, obviously um, comedy and parody. So one perspective was my computer hates me, which I say five times a day. And the other perspective was, man, I really hate that bitch. And it was from the computer's perspective and it was, it was hilarious and wonderful. I think if you can give, give personality and humor and detail, that's what really counts. Like the rich detail, the descriptive, um, just the identifying, like things that are adjectives and colorful and descriptive and, and help put you in the moment. I think that can work. You can't get a, escape that the best type of story comes from a person. But that monarch butterfly email, I loved it. I thought it was really great. That's not an, an inanimate object, but it's still pretty. It was still pretty amazing. Okay. Um, let's see. Number four, we're already on number four. Focus on the subject line. Please spend some time focusing on the subject line. So this is where I kind of differ from all of those kind of spammy best practices out there. People are wise to those, you know, when you write re with the dots or forward or whatever that is. People are wise to cute and witty email subject lines that are just clickbait. If you've had success, calling your emails June email newsletter, then by all means, please stick to that. Stick to what works. If people expect it and they look forward to it, changing it up may hurt your open rates. But for the rest of us, use clear and simple language. Stay away from passive words. I also read recently that numbers get results, numbers and subject lines, questions, and then really avoid words that will trigger your spam filters like free or money or offer. Some of those can potentially send your email to spam. So you definitely want to test out more compelling subject lines, but don't get too cutesy. Don't have too much punctuation and do not write in all caps. Those are going to send you 
to the spam folder in the blink of an eye. Um, okay, great. Ooh, I love what Christina said. I tried to write an appeal letter for a museum as one of their collection items. Roller coaster car. The curators loved it. Bosses didn't. Never saw the light of day. Yeah, that's always the problem. Um, oh, Marty, a friend writes her letter as if she were the ship talking about how damaged her sails were. Wow, that'd be really interesting. I would. Those are all very interesting. I think that people don't expect it. And as long as it's written in kind of a, a fun tone, I think it would be great. The problem with email, and I'll talk a lot about this in my masterclass next week, is convincing other people to get on board. So I'll give you some tips to convince and talk to your boss, talk to your board, talk to other people about, let's take a risk here. Like, let's not, let's do something out of the ordinary. All right, number five, our last tip, edit and edit and edit and edit again. Start with the most important information first. Don't bury the lead. Don't waste that first sentence. And also remember that people scan. People scan. So don't put like the most important information in the bottom of a paragraph. Always, always look at your email through the lens of your audience. Is your email providing valuable information? Subscribers can't easily find anywhere else. Is the information you're providing solving a problem? Or are you just telling them the same thing every week? Is your newsletter concise? Is, you know, I know it's tempting to include all the information rather than keeping the text brief and linking to places with further details, um, such as blog posts, your website, programming calendars, but all of that makes newsletters really cumbersome and heavy and dense and long fast. So keep your newsletter short and sweet and let your readers click to learn more if they want. Okay. Yay. I'm fascinated by your collage wall. <laughs> Thanks. I love my collage wall. I need to do an Instagram story where I go over um, everybody on the wall and I, I'm i just constantly building it. All right. So one more plug for my live training next week. It is, if you're on in my teachable school, um, just go to courses and it will be there. If not, go to the link in the comments. I'm happy to answer any questions. If you're on my email list, you'll probably get maybe one, two more emails um, about it before we go live on April 14th. Um, all right, weekly ver email versus monthly. So Casey, that's really interesting and I'll, I will talk about it next week, but um, weekly tends to get better open rates. And I just, I had a client that emailed me and let me see, I literally need to, I'm going to highlight her. I'm just looking in my inbox. I'm going to highlight her next week and I can't remember the name of the organization. She might be on this Facebook live, but she emailed me and she said, you know, based on your suggestions, we started emailing weekly. We were terrified. We thought we'd have unsubscribes all over the place and it'd be great. It would be madness. And what they found is that their open rates actually increased <laughs> and that they're reaching even more people and their click through rates have increased because rather than sending a monthly email with 10,000 things for me to look at, they send a shorter weekly email. And this is just the trend in communications, shorter, sweeter, more concise. Now I, you know, I have even weekly newsletters that I get that are still too long for me to read. And I wish I could read all of them. And they're from people I trust, organizations I love. But the reality is a lot of times I have to delete them. A lot of times I have to move them to a folder to never read again, just based on our busy lives. Shorter, sweeter, more concise emails just tend to work better. So, you know, thank you. Oh, thanks, Marty, for signing up. Um, Linda says, will this be live later? Yes. So once the Facebook Live video concludes, it's available at the same link. So Facebook just kind of saves it as a link and it's always going to be available on my um, Facebook page. Um, so that's great. But thank you so much for coming today. I hope you, if you have questions, let me know. I'm, I'm willing to stay for the next few minutes. I wanted to kind of keep this 
short and sweet. Um, just give you some actionable items to really help step up your email game. Give your email a glow up as my daughter calls, which I guess is a makeover. Um, I'm not, I'm still not under, understanding what a glow up is necessarily, but maybe it's just some quick tips and, and, you know, things to improve and, and revamp rather than do a whole overhaul. Just keep these five things in mind. Um, all right, cool. So thank you for coming. Check out my workshop next week. I go live occasionally. This one was completely spontaneous. I wasn't sure if I was going to do it, but I thought, you know what? I, I want to, I have the time. These are questions I get, I get a lot. So if you have any questions for me, email them to me, leave them in the comments and um, you never know, you might see them answered on another Facebook Live. So thanks everybody, I just really appreciate it. Um, I always appreciate your support and quote unquote, seeing your faces <laughs> every week. All right, take care and have a fantastic weekend. Bye everybody.